Hi friends, welcome to our YouTube channel Narach Academy. The meaning of this lecture is to discuss about the TSPS general studies questions in a very very detailed manner. And if you like the content of our channel, then please do like, share and subscribe our YouTube channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon button. So whenever we upload a new video, the direct notification comes to mobile. If any improvements you in our lectures, then please do comment in the comment section. We will definitely include all those improvements in the coming lectures. So why do we waste more time? So let's get started. So now you are going to solve the 21st question. See the question here. In tamarind paste, which acid is present? So in tamarind paste, which acid is present? Option A, aqua regia. Option B, ascorbic acid. Option C, hydrochloric acid. And option D, tartaric acid. So the other options, option A, tartaric acid is the correct solution of this question. So let's discuss something more facts about this one. So now we'll discuss some of the important facts of the tamarind. So tamarind basically in Telugu we call it as a chindakai. So the major acid which is present in the tamarind is tartaric acid. Tartaric acid is the major acid which is present in the tamarind. So because of this presence of tartaric acid only, this tamarind is going to taste like a acidic taste. So this tamarind is going to have a acidic taste because of the tartaric acid. So in tamarind there are a lot of acids but among them the major component is tartaric acid which is around 12 to 18 percentage. So because of this major component only this is going to have an acidic taste. And this tartaric acid is also present in tamarind, banana and grapes. So in these two also, in these two banana and grapes also, this tartaric acid is present. So because of this reason only, the banana, grapes and tamarind is going to have an acidic taste. This tamarind pulp, this tamarind pulp is going to use in the traditional, this tamarind pulp is used in the traditional medicines in order to cure the diseases and it also used in the curries, chutneys, sauces and ice cream. So basically this tamarind pulp is also used in the traditional medicines in order to cure the diseases. It is also used in curries, chutneys, sauces and ice cream. So in this tamarind paste, in the tamarind paste, the acids which are present are tartaric acid, malic acid, supnic acid, quinic acid and citric acid. All these acids are present in the tamarind paste. But among these, the major component, the highest percentage component which is tartaric acid of, of around 12 to 18 percentage. So because of this component acid only, this tamarind paste is going to have an acidic taste. So we will discuss some of the important concepts also. See in the different, in vinegar, in vinegar, the major acidic is, acetic acid is going to present. So the major acid present in the vinegar is acetic acid. And for orange and lemon, the citric acid is the most major component. And for the curd, milk curd, we are going to get a lactic acid. So lactic acid present in the milk curd. And in tomato, oxalic acid. And similarly, ant sting and nettle sting means when ant is going to bite you on the human being, then this ant is going to release some acid, which is called as a methanoic acid or it is also called as a formic acid. The basic chemical formula is HCOOH. So HCOOH is the chemical formula of the methanoic acid or it is also called as a formic acid. So whenever the ant is going to bite you, the acid which is, re which is released by the ant is methanoic acid. So because of this only you are going to feel as a burning. So whenever the ant is going to bite you, this acid is released by the ant. So because of this acid only, the human being is going to feel like a burning. So because of that reason only, in order to, in order to avoid this burning, you need to apply any soap or either you baking soda, anything you, you apply. So, so therefore you can relieve from the pain. So these are some of the important concepts of the tamarind. So in the tamarind paste, the major acidic component is present is tartaric acid. So because of this reason only, there will be acidic taste. So now we are going to solve the 22nd question. See the question here. Which of the following vitamins decomposes easily on heating? So which of the following vitamins decomposes easily on heating? Option A, vitamin C. Option B, vitamin E. Option C, vitamin B. Option D, vitamin A. So what are the four options? Option A, vitamin C is the correct solution of this question. So let's discuss something more facts about this one. So now we'll discuss some of the important facts of the vitamin C. So vitamin C is also called as a lascorbic acid or ascorbic acid. So vitamin C is basically it is also called as a lascorbic acid or ascorbic acid because this ascorbic acid is present in the vitamin C. So that is the reason the vitamin C is also called as a lascorbic acid or ascorbic acid. So this vitamin C is basically it is going to present in the fruits and vegetables. Some of the examples are tomato, potato, strawberry, orange and etc. So in these things the vitamin C is going to present. So basically here 
as per the latest data the 19 plus years means above the 19 years of age of people the daily how much is the daily consumption of the vitamin c per daily for the males females and the smokers the data is given like this so in one day a male has to consume 90 milligrams of vitamin c and for a female in one day she has to consume 75 milligram of vitamin c she need to consume in a one day but for the smokers, the people who are going to smoke, they have to consume more than that means 90 plus 35 means per day. Suppose 90 milligram is vitamin C is consumed by a male. Suppose he is a non-smoker. Let us assume that he is not going to smoke. So therefore, this person who is going to smoke, he has to consume more than above this non-smokers by 35 milligrams. So, so therefore, 90 plus 35 milligram of vitamin C, this much amount of vitamin C must be consumed by the smokers in one day. So therefore, this is the latest data. So male, female and the smokers. So we are assuming males as a non-smokers. So, so therefore, the smokers who are present in this has to consume more than this first data. So therefore, here we can conclude that 90 milligrams of vitamin C must be consumed by a male. I, we, we are assuming he is a non-smoker in one day. And females, she, they have to consume 75 milligram of vitamin C in one day and the smokers they have to consume 90 plus 35 milligrams of vitamin C they have to consume in one day. So this is the latest data. So basically what is going to happen is suppose the fruits which are going to have this vitamin C suppose if you are going to dissolve in water suppose there is a water so in this you kept some fruit so let us assume the fruit that is tomato. So now this tomato you kept here. In the water and you made it heated so therefore what is going to happen is as this vitamin C is going to have this ascorbic acid so this ascorbic acid is a soluble in water so therefore this tomato is going to have vitamin C right so this vitamin C is going to come outside and it is going to soluble in water so this vitamin C because of the ascorbic acid which is present in vitamin C it is going to soluble in water and when you are going to heat it is going to evaporate so therefore what is going to happen is the food is going to lose the vitamin C so therefore you cannot able to store suppose if any food which has vitamin C you cannot store for longer days that is the reason you have to consume as fast as possible so that is the reason so so always you have to try to eat the raw fruits and vegetables so don't heat the fruits or vegetables you keep in water and don't heat it so therefore the vitamin c is going to last so therefore it is highly recommended to always eat raw fruits and vegetables so therefore vitamin c will be present otherwise if you dissolve in water and if you heat it the vitamin c is going to last so because of the ascorbic acid because it is soluble in water and if you heat it is going to decompose so, so therefore never never going to heat if it's given so so never heat any fruit or vegetable you keep in water and heat it because it is going to lose the vitamin c so it is highly recommend to eat the raw fruits and vegetables so therefore vitamin c is also going to help you so if you consume lot of vitamin c as per the latest data this much amount of vitamin c if you consume every day so it is going to help you in slow turning aging means the wrinkles means the skin wrinkles will be delayed the process will be delayed so therefore you will be able to always looking like a youth so therefore if you consume the vitamin c as per the latest data it helps in you slow down aging means the wrinkles will be very very less when compared to without consuming vitamin c so it going to prevent the skin scagging or screen wrinklings. So this is what I have written here. Ascorbic acid is present in vitamin C and it is soluble in H2O. So therefore by eating this it was destroyed. So whenever you keep any fruit or vegetable in the water it is going to dissolve means the vitamin C is going to dissolve in water and if you heat it it is going to evaporate. So that is the reason. So don't able to keep it in water and heat it so therefore it is a highly so vitamin c basically is nothing but it is a water soluble and a temperature sensitive vitamin so blindly we can go to say it as a vitamin c is nothing but it is a water soluble vitamin and it is also highly temperature sensitive vitamin so vitamin c cannot be stored in longer days in a food so if any food which has vitamin c it cannot be stored in that food for longer days so it is highly recommend to eat as fast as possible so always going to prefer to eat raw food fruits and vegetables so therefore the it will be the vitamin c will be present for a longer days so now we are going to solve the 23rd question see the question here which enzyme is found in tears option is sebum option b ptylin option c lysosome option d pepsin so what are the four options option c lysosome is the enzyme is going to present in the tears so let's discuss something more facts about this one so now we'll discuss each and every enzyme which is present in the options 
so for let us take for the lysosome so this is a special enzyme it is going to present in the tears saliva and sweat so it is a very very special type of enzyme is going to present in the tears saliva and sweat and it is going to protect our body from the bacteria so if the bacteria is going to enter through mouth then as and also ears so as if suppose if the bacteria wants to enter through our mouth and tears then then not eyes then what is going to happen is this special enzyme is going to present in the mouth and eyes so therefore this is going to protect from bacteria so it is going to protect our body from the this bacteria entering through the mouth and the eyes because this enzyme is going to present in the mouth and also in the tears which is the tears saliva and sweat so in all these three things this lysosome special enzyme is going to present so in the question they asked which is the enzyme which is present in the tears means lysosome so now come to the tylenlin so tylenlin is nothing but a suppose in the saliva in the mouth saliva there is also another special type of enzyme which is also called as the which is also called as the amylase or tylenin so amylase is also called as a tylenin so this is nothing but a in the saliva there is a special enzyme that that enzyme is called as a amylase or tylenin so main function of this enzyme is nothing but it is so 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 whenever you are going to consume the food here there is a starch in the food right so it is going to break down the starch into maltose in the mouth only so therefore 30 percentage of uh, starch digestion is going to take only in the mouth and remaining 70 percentage of the starch digestion is going to occur in the small intestine so the main function of this tylenin this enzyme is going to present in the saliva and it is going to break down the starch so whatever the food you are going to take here so so 30% of the starch is going to digest in the mouth itself and remaining 70% of the starch is going to digest in the small intestine so because of this tylenin only 30% of the starch digestion is going to take only in the mouth cavity so break down starch into simpler sugar such as maltose and 30% of starch digestion take place in the mouth because of this special type of enzyme which is called as a tylenin and tylenin is the enzyme which is going to present in the saliva and now pepsin so pepsin is nothing but a this is a special type of enzyme which is going to present in the stomach so in the stomach there is a special enzyme which is which is called as a pepsin and this pepsin enzyme is going to digest the proteins so whatever the food you are going to take so the food you are going to take inside so this this food is going to have proteins so this proteins are digested with the help of this special enzyme pepsin so pepsin is the enzyme which is going to digest the proteins which are which you are taking the food and sebum this is a sebum sebum is a special enzyme which is present in the this sebaceous glass the sebaceous glass which are on the skin are going to produce some oil so some oil is going to pr produce by the sebaceous glands and this oil is nothing but sebum this oil is also called as a sebum so this sebum is going to protect our body our skin so it is going to protect our skin but too much of sebum means too much of oil is going to make very very more oily skin so if the sebum is more means the skin will be very very oily skin so always the, oil, the sebum must be in a limited manner so therefore the skin will be very very healthy otherwise it will be a oily skin so this oily skin is skin is going to have it because of the hormone imbalance if any person who is have hormone imbalance then the sebaceous glands is going to produce large amount of the sebum means oily so therefore he he will have more oily skin so if the oily skin if the oil is the sebum produces in limited manner means that person is going to have a highly best skin healthy skin so this sebum the sebum is going to contain this enzyme is going to contain some of this which, which are the sequelin esters glycerin wax cholesterol and fatty acids all these components are going to present in the sebum so these are the special enzymes so lysosome is a special enzyme which is going to present in the tears saliva and sweat and this is going to the main function of this is to protect from the bacteria coming into our body and similarly tylenin tylenin is nothing but it is a special type of enzyme which is going to present in the saliva and it is going to break down the starch in the mouth by 30 percentage and pepsin pepsin is nothing but it is, a, it is also a special type of enzyme which is present in the stomach and it is going to digest the proteins so whatever the food you are going to take so this food has some proteins these proteins are digested by the pepsin and similarly sebum sebum is nothing but this is secreted by the sebaceous glands that is called as a oil so oil, oil is also called as a sebum and this sebum if the person has hormone imbalance means is going to have highly oily skin so if the if this sebum is a limited manner means he is going to have a very healthy skin 
so here the sebum contains squalin esters glycerol wax cholesterol and fatty acids all these things are present in the sebum so these are the some of the important facts in the question they asked which is the special enzyme which is present in the tears means lysosome so now you are going to solve 24th question see the question here general sunscreen lotions provide protection from these rays so option a infrared rays option b ultraviolet rays option c blue light rays option d microwaves so what are the four options option b ultraviolet rays so this sunscreen lotions are going to protect our body from the ultraviolet rays so let's discuss something more facts about this one so now we'll discuss some of the important facts of the ultraviolet rays and also the screen sunscreen lotions see this ultraviolet rays so the sun is going to emit the ultraviolet rays so if you stand in the sun for lot of duration then this ultraviolet rays are very harmful for your skins so it is going to cause the sunburns on the skin or skin cancer so if any person is going to stand under the sun for lot amount of duration then is going the skin is going to have some severe pains which are the sunburns and also the skin cancer so these two things are going to happen so if you are going to stand under the sun for a lot of duration because ultraviolet rays are very harmful for the human body so if you take sunscreen lotions in the market there are so many sunscreen lotions so all these sunscreen lotions have some small similar components which are here auto benzoyl zinc oxide and titanium dioxide so if you take if you go to any market and if you see any sunscreen lotions all these lotions have some similar components which are auto benzoyl zinc acid titanium dioxide so these all these components are going to have some property which is they are going to filter the uv rays see these are these three components have some basic property which is they are going to filter the uv rays but they are not going to block all uv rays only they can filter suppose if suppose there are 100 rays are going to come then they can only go for 50 percentage only 50 percentage only they can filter and remaining 50 percentage of uv rays are going to enter into our body but they are going to filter only the uv rays but not they are going to block all the uv rays only they are going to filter some some amount of uv rays but not all the uv rays so if you take any skin lotion they cannot block all the 100 percent uv rays only they can filter some amount of harmful uv rays so if you go to any market and if you see any sunscreen lotion product there will be a something like spf spf means sun protector factor and if you see spf is greater than 30 percentage so on the product if you on the product label there will be a spf means sun protector factor and if it is greater than 30 percentage against the uv rays then only you have to buy that product otherwise you don't have to buy that product so it is a very very highly recommended so if you go to any market then you have to see that lotion whether this has spf is greater than 30 percentage or not if it is greater than 30 percentage only against the uv rays then only you have to buy that screen lotion otherwise you don't have to buy this that screen lotion so here and we also know that if you stand under the sun for lot of miss for some amount of duration then our then our body is going to produce the vitamin d so but there is also some so if you stand under the sun for lot amount of duration you are going to get the vitamin d so vitamin d is going to generate in our body but there is also this side effects like sunburns and skin cancers so it is better to it is it is better to get the vitamin d by other source rather than shining under the sun for lot of duration so therefore you can avoid these two things sunburns and skin cancer so finally what i'm trying to say is this sunscreen lotions are going to eliminate the or is going to filter the ultraviolet rays so this is the last question of this lecture so the question here which is the fourth state of matter option a plasma option b liquid crystals option c super liquids option d soft crystals so what are the four options option a plasma so plasma is called as a fourth state of matter so let's discuss something more facts about this one so now we'll discuss some of the important facts of the matter so matter is going to occur in four states which are the solids liquids gas and plasma so plasma is called as a fourth state of matter see what is going to happen is suppose if you are going to heat the solids so if you are going to heat the solids it is going to convert into liquids and if you are going to heat the liquids then you are going to liquid is going to change to gas and if you heat the gas then you are going to get the plasma so this is the reason see if you are going to heat the solids you are going to get liquids and if you heat the liquid then you are going to get gas and if you are going to heat the gas then this is called as a plasma so this is 
this gas is this third shade gas is nothing but it is a neutral gas but this is called as a electrical charged gas so we can say this as a neutral gas and this is a charged gas charge is nothing but here let me tell you here see in the gas in the normal gas what is going to happen is so this is the atom right so this is a nucleus so inside the nucleus neutrons and protons will be present and here there will be electron so this is for a gas but for plasma what is going to happen is so now you are going to heat the gas so if you are going to give the energy to this atom this electron is going to become free so therefore this electron is going to come outside so therefore now this atom is good this atom or ion is going to have a positive charge so positive ion we are going to say it is going to have a positive charge and here this electron is going to have a negative charge so therefore in the neutral gas this electron is going to bond to the atom but if you are going to heat it this electron is going to come outside so it is a free to move so it can easily freely move this, this electron can easily freely move so it is called as a now charged gas so plasma is nothing but it is a charged gas so it is also called as ionized gas means there is a positive ion and a free electron so yeah. there is a reason the plasma is a ionized gas means negative charge electron and a positive charge ion so because of this presence only suppose now you are going to so in this plasma this negative electron and positive atom if you are going to place the electric field and magnetic field as these are charged ions so they are going to affect with the help of electric field and magnetic field so they, they have some effects on the electric field and magnetic field but the neutral gas has no effect on the electric field and magnetic field but plasma gas is going to have effect on the positive on the electric field and negative field because there are charged ions now so therefore this plasma gas is affected by the electric field and magnetic field but neutral gas or the third state gas is not going to have any effect on the electric field and magnetic field so some of the examples of the plasma so plasma is going to occur in some of these examples which is gas as in discharge tubes fluorescent lamp and neon lights so if you see any fluorescent lamp there is a gas so though that gas is always heated so because of that reason only it is going to emit the light so as the gas is very very heated in that gas there is a positive ion and the electron negative electron so this is called as a charged gas so therefore this is called as a plasma so the plasma is now present in the discharge tubes and auroras and if you see in the night there will be lot of colors in the sky so that is called as a charged gas so it is also auroras in the ionosphere the gas is heated to very very high temperature so so therefore there is also a charged electrons and in the ionosphere also the gas is heated to high temperature so therefore there also plasma is present and similarly stars and sun you know in the stars and sun there is a lot of temperature so around that the space is going to heat it so much so therefore it is also have a lot of plasma and in solar wind and interstellar gas clouds so in the galaxy also at very very far places the clouds which are going to heat it to high temperature so there also plasma is present so in all these examples the plasma is present and the best example is in your house fluorescent lamp and neon lights because the gas is heated to high temperature there so that is the reason the plasma is present in your home only which is fluorescent lamps and neon lights so these are the some of the examples of the plasma the plasma is present in all these things so plasma is nothing but a heated form of the gas so if you heat a gas to high temperature then this electron is going to become free so this positive ion charge and the negative electron they are going to have free so that is the reason this is called as a charged gas or ionized gas so plasma is nothing but a ionized or charged gas so by this lecture we have successfully completed the 25 questions which are the previous year questions of the tsps general studies in a very very detailed manner and if you like the content of our channel then please do like share and subscribe our youtube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon button so whenever we upload a new video the direct notifications comes over by if any improvements you get in our video lectures then please do comment in the comment section we will definitely include all those improvements in the coming lectures thank you so much for watching this lecture keep smiling take care and bye bye